We can see that uh, the Quranic uh, uh, scripture is being confirmed by independent uh, investigation. And yes, we need that sort of investigation in order to corroborate the scriptures. We cannot just simply say that this scripture is the word of God and God no needs no corroborating evidence. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to the proof that Islam is the truth. And here over these series, we've been trying to show you the evidences through which and by which a rational, intelligent human being could know that Islam truly is the revelation from Allah. What the Quran mentioned about Isa is 100% perfect, even historically, whatever the Quran says, Today, if you go back to history, it is perfectly correct. There's nothing wrong about it. Muslims claim that their Quran is historically reliable. And Christians as well say that the Bible is historically reliable. Well, both religions make a historical claim on one event. And in this video, I will examine each side, each position that each religion takes, and we'll see which one is historically correct now before i get into the subject i want to talk a little bit about how history is actually done well what is history history here's the definition the study of past events particularly in human affairs and what's typically done is historians will examine the available evidence on a on a topic or a person uh, or an event and they'll gather all the related items that they need to to make a good judge judgment on if it's historically true or not like uh, written documents or artifacts or things of this nature so historians gather all the available evidence and see if something his, is historically accurate or not now both the Bible and the Quran claim to be books from God uh, Christians believe in the inspiration of the Bible, and, and Muslims believe that the Quran is eternal and uncreated, and has always been, and it was me mechanically dictated to Muhammad, word for word. That's their claim. Now, each religion claims that their book is historically accurate. When you're making a historical claim, this I'm not talking about different genres like poetry or something like that. I'm talking about when each book says this happened. This was something that happened in history with a real person. This is, this is the truth. If one of those claims can be made to be historically inaccurate, that means that that particular book is not from God. Now, there's certain questions you can answer to determine if something is historically accurate or not. Does the historical claim have multiple sources? Does it have independent sources? Does it have eyewitness testimony? Does it even have evidence received from eyewitnesses and recorded? Is it early testimony? Now, obviously, the earlier testimony you can get back to an event between when the event happened and when something was recorded or written down, the better. And historians are really looking for what's called primary sources, especially when they're dealing with ancient history. Now here is the definition of a primary source that I'll be working with in this video. Primary sources are first-hand accounts or other sources from the historical era that you are studying. I'm going to be using four historical criteria to see if Islam made the correct historical claim or if Christianity made the correct historical claim based upon the following four historical criteria. Now when we're talking about historical evidence, the first thing you need to look at is testimony attested to by multiple independent witnesses and it's usually stronger than the testimony of one witness. You're looking for affirmation by a neutral or even hostile source since sometimes bias is within the original source. Number three, 
An early testimony from very close to the event in question is considered more reliable than recorded long after the event. And second-hand sources, evidence received firsthand from eyewitnesses, is good evidence. Now, this is, uh, think of your local newscast or your local newspaper, where a reporter will interview a eyewitness to something and write it down, and that's second-hand sources. Those are really good sources for historical evidence. So, this is the claim that I'll be examining. Did Jesus die by crucifixion? Christianity says yes. Islam says no. Let's take a look at the evidence from the Christian standpoint. You have the Bible and the books within the Bible. They are all primary sources. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and the book of Acts, and many of Paul's letters, and Peter himself in a letter, all of them attest to the crucifixion of Jesus. Now, these are each independent sources because each book was written at a different time to a different uh, group of people. So these are, even though they're all in one Bible, they're really separate books. So you have Matthew, who was an eyewitness to Jesus. You have John, who was also an eyewitness to Jesus, and he was an apostle. You have Mark and Luke, who got their information from eyewitness testimony. And you have Paul, who got his uh, eyewitness testimony in letters. And scholars say that the New Testament was completed between 37 and or 60 years after the crucifixion. That's from the liberal date. Uh, the later date is around 60 years. That's what most uh, critical scholars will attest to. And you have a lot of conservative biblical scholars that say that the whole Bible was completed by 70 AD. That's around 37 or 40 years after the crucifixion. Now again, each one of these books is a primary source to the crucifixion. And the earliest book written in the New Testament does contain the crucifixion. And it was written uh, about 15 to 20 years after the crucifixion. And creeds within the New Testament go back even further than that. When did this creed, this information, which, what is that information, by the way, that's in 1 Corinthians 15, and then tell us about how, fa how far back the scholars are saying this goes? Well, we, we used in an earlier show, we used the words pre-Pauline. Here's the cross. Paul comes to Jesus. Now, pre-Pauline could be, in this case, anything up to the writing of 1 Corinthians, but Technically, the real heavy pre-Pauline stuff is right in here. It is this. When Paul comes to Jesus, if he would have stopped and said, Stop the presses. I'm a Christian now. What do we already know about Jesus? That creed would have been there. That creed would have been in existence. That's pre-Pauline means Christ died for sins according to scriptures, buried, rose again from the dead according to scriptures, and appeared to Cephas and then uh, two individuals, three groups. How can Paul be the maestro that strums the song for Christianity? When Paul comes to the Lord, this text is already in existence. Then we have Clement of Rome, a contemporary of Peter and Paul, writing a letter in the first century talking about the crucifixion. We have Polycarp, a student of John who wrote multiple letters and also talked about the crucifixion. And he writes his letters around 110 A.D. Then we have Josephus, the Jewish historian, who wrote around 94 A.D. And he mentions the crucifixion of Jesus. We also have a Roman historian, Tacitus, in around 116 A.D. recording the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Then we have Lucian of Samosata. He writes around 165 A.D. He talks about the crucifixion. We have Marabar Serapion. He was a Stoic philosopher. He writes around 73 A.D. And he also mentions the crucifixion of Jesus. And then we have the Talmud. And the story in the Talmud about Jesus being 
Crucify comes from Sanhedrin 43a, and it was written around 188 to 217 AD. This is on the edge of what can be considered a primary source. So all of these sources, the New Testament and each one of the books, Clement of Rome, Polycarp, Josephus, Tacitus, Lucian of Samosata, Marabar Serapion, and the Talmud are all primary sources, which is exactly what historians are looking for when they're doing ancient history. Now that's the facts, that's the evidence. So we're going to filter that evidence through the four criteria and we'll see if it's historically reliable that Jesus died by crucifixion. We have testimony attested to by multiple independent sources. Do we? Yes, we do. We have all the books of the Bible, and we have five sources outside of the Bible that give historical evidence that Jesus Christ was crucified. Affirmation from a neutral or hostile source. Yes, we have that as well. The most neutral source is probably Josephus and all the other four primary sources that we have that come outside of the Bible are really hostile toward Christianity. In each one of those pieces of evidence, all five testimonies say that Jesus died by crucifixion. Listed in the New Testament, we have eyewitnesses. We have four Marys listed by name who witnessed the crucifixion. We have many other women also that saw the crucifixion. We have the Roman soldiers who saw the crucifixion. We have two criminals who were crucified on each side of Jesus. We have a large crowd that witnessed the crucifixion. Now keep in mind Jesus was crucified in Jerusalem at Passover time and that means there were thousands, hundreds of thousands probably of Jews visiting in Jerusalem during Passover so the crowd was probably very large. We have the chief priests, we have the scribes, we have the Pharisees, and we have the Sanhedrin. All of these people are listed as witnesses within the New Testament. And we have the Apostle John himself who was there at the crucifixion. So yes, the historical evidence proves that Jesus did die by crucifixion. Now, let's listen to a couple of independent voices who will back me up on this assertion. John McIntyre, the uh, historian, says this, Even those scholars and critics who have been moved to depart from almost everything else within the historical content of Christ's presence on earth have found it impossible to think away the factuality of the death of Christ. McIntyre is quite correct. Atheist Luderman writes, Jesus' death as a consequence of crucifixion is indisputable. For the Jewish scholar Verms, the passion of Jesus is part of history. The rather skeptical scholar Paula Fredrickson writes, the single most solid fact about Jesus' life in his death, he was executed by the Roman prefect Pilate on around Passover in the manner Rome reserved particularly for political insurrectionists, namely crucifixion. Now let's listen to Bart Ehrman, every Muslim's favorite atheist. And whether he was indeed crucified. Right, I know in, I know in Islam the, the, the teaching is that he, he was not actually uh, crucified. I think on a historical basis, Jesus was absolutely crucified. I, I think that there is, uh, as a historian, there's, there's almost no doubt about that. And in case, in case your audience doesn't know, I'm, I'm not, I don't identify as a Christian. I mean, I, I was raised a Christian, but I'm an atheist now. I'm not, I don't have a particular stake in any of this information personally. But I think the crucifixion of Jesus is one of the, is probably the best attested one of the best te attested events of his life. Um, it is um, it's found all over the place in our early sources. It's even mentioned by non Christian sources, and it's um, uh, it's a kind of a complicated thing for me to argue. Although I can at length if somebody wants me to the, that that it is not it's not the kind of thing that Christians would have made up about him if they wanted to make up legends. 
Um, if they wanted to make up something about Jesus, it wouldn't be that he got killed by the enemy. So it's conclusive. Jesus definitely died by crucifixion according to what the Bible says. But what does Islam say? Islam claims this. And at the same time, we believe he was not crucified. We believe he was taken up to heaven before he was harmed by the Romans. And we believe that the traitor who wanted to hand him into the Romans was the one whose face was changed to his face. And he was the one crucified. Yet Jesus, may peace be upon him, was protected by the Almighty, raised up to the heavens in his form and life that he had in the world. And he is alive today. Quran says in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse 157, that they said and boast that we killed Jesus, the son of Mary, the Jews, they said and boast, we killed Jesus, son of Mary. They killed him not, neither did they crucify him. Well, I can should be alone. It was only made to appear so. And all those who differ are full of doubts. With only conjecture to follow. For a surety, they killed him not. So according to the Quran, the Jews said and boast that we killed Jesus, cast peace be upon him. But they killed him not, neither did they crucify him. It was only made to appear so. So the claim is Jesus did not die by crucifixion and Allah put a substitute on the cross and made that substitute to look just like Jesus to fool everybody in thinking that Jesus was crucified. This is the Muslim claim. Is that historically accurate or not? Now let's look at the evidence. Now there are Gnostic writings from docetists in about the 3rd or 4th century centuries after the crucifixion of Jesus that talk about Jesus not dying on the cross. But here's why Muslims don't use those as sources. Because the Docetist, they, their contention was Jesus couldn't have died by crucifixion because he was totally God and through and through and did not have a human body. So the Docetist said that Jesus was God and Muslims don't believe that Jesus is God, so they don't even look at these Gnostic writings as something that they would claim, or they would say is proof for their, his their historical claim that Jesus didn't die by crucifixion, but it is obvious to anyone who is neutral or critical of Islam to see that that story that made it into the Quran was stolen from Gnostics. So their claim again, Jesus didn't die by crucifixion. Let's look at their evidence. We have the Quran, and the Quran was written 600 years after the crucifixion. Then we have the Tafsir from Al-Tabari that was written down 850 years after the crucifixion that talks about this event where Jesus did not die by crucifixion and Allah put a substitute person on the cross and changed his face to fool and trick the entire world into thinking that it was Jesus. Zero primary sources, none whatsoever, for the Muslim claim that Jesus did not die by crucifixion. So the conclusion is obvious. The Quran is a false book because it makes a very bold claim that Jesus never died by crucifixion. And we have seen from historical evidence that that's a false statement. Now, why is this so important, my dear Muslim friends? Well, number one, it's the heart, very heart of the gospel message that your Muslim leaders are trying to keep you from hearing and believing and trusting in that there was a reason why Jesus died by crucifixion. And the first thing you need to understand is who Jesus actually was. Jesus was not a mere prophet. He is the eternal Son of God, the Word of God, who has always existed, has the same nature as the Father and the Holy Spirit. He became a man, took on human flesh for you, because God loves you that much that Jesus voluntarily became a human being specifically to die on a cross 
for your sin and to save you from your sin and bring you into a relationship with the one and only God, Yahweh of the Bible. And to prove that his crucifixion will bring salvation, he rose from the dead. So the second part of the gospel message is Jesus didn't die and stay in the grave. Without the resurrection, there is no gospel. Without the resurrection, there is no salvation. Without the resurrection, Christianity is false. But Jesus did rise from the dead to prove that he was Lord, that he loves everyone, and he wants to save everyone. That is the message, my dear Muslim friends. And so your Muslim leaders have been lying to you your whole entire life about the truth of who Jesus is and what he did for you. Now, my dear Muslim friend, you can repent and leave Islam behind, leave the Quran behind, Muhammad, all your false leaders who have been lying to you for your whole life about who Jesus is, leave those behind today and trust in Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And if you do that today, my dear Muslim friends, you will never regret it.